confident of what we hope for, convinced about things we do not see. A Holman's Christian, now faith is the reality of things we hope for, the proof of what's not seen. I won't read all the names of the translations. Now faith is the substantiation of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Now faith is the assurance. Um, faith is to be sure of things we are certain of. Uh, of things we cannot see. Faith assures us of things we expect and convinces us of the existence of things we cannot see. Now faith is assurance of things hoped for, a proof of things not seen. And uh, now faith is the realization of what things are hoped for, the proof of things not seen. The message says a fundamental fact of, his, of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we cannot see. Uh, some of the words are pretty much the same, but we must says, now faith is a well-grounded assurance of that for which we hope and a conviction of the reality of which we do not see. And um, amplified, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real, fact what is not revealed to the senses. So there, that is a, many translations of what the Bible uh, says. So it would be really good for you maybe to uh, do some homework along these lines. I really feel in my heart too that um, it's a fact, uh, maybe teachers know this, that if you make notes, your, your brain will remember 70% uh, more of what you're hearing and learning. And since the Bible says faith comes from hearing and hearing from from the word, it, it builds faith because that's how faith comes. Faith is going to come from hearing the word. And so uh, it jumps up several percentages again, probably another 20% if you read what you have written down. And then it jumps up to a phenomenal that if you read it once for a whole week, that your notes that you have, have got, then you're going to remember Incredible! It, it, it gives a chance for it to go from your, your mouth to your head to your heart to be able to actually, this one of these translations says, it gives you a handle on what actually is yours. And then I want to tie in this other scripture I don't have in our notes either. It, it just um, builds a bridge to how faith operates. Romans 4.16 says, Therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith and depends entirely on faith in order that it might be given as an act of grace, unmerited favor, to make it stable and valid and guaranteed. So it, I think, it would, again, it, it depends, the promise of God in t uh, depends entirely on faith in order that it might be given as an act of grace. So God's grace, which is his unmerited favor, kicks in when you do your homework and make sure that you get the word of God and, and apply faith. Amen? So first of all, before we go anywhere, um, You've got to have some things that you're hoping for. How many have a few things that they're hoping for? They haven't yet seen. And so faith is the evidence of things hoped for. So I think it's so important for us to be very clear on what we're actually hoping for. It sort of reminds me of a, a mountain climber that throws his rope with his pick and makes sure he's, he's got an anchor on, on, on what he's actually hoping for. And then by faith, he's putting one hand in front of the other and getting a grip until he obtains those things that he's hoping for. And so I literally um, worked it down into the ABCs because I just like to keep it things really simple and hopefully that'll help you remember. But faith is accepting. 
Faith is an accepting thing. We're told to accept Jesus. Jesus talks to uh, the religious people and he says, you study the scriptures diligently because you think in them you have eternal life and these are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings. I know you, I know that you do not have love of God in your hearts and I've come in my Father's name and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in their name, you're accepting them. So faith is in plain, uh, workable, uh, understandable language. We have to accept, in order to receive salvation, we have to accept Jesus. To as many as received him, John 1, 12 says, to as many as received him, he gave power to become children of God. So, you know, it, we're not, this isn't about faith necessarily in your salvation, although faith works for your salvation like it does for all the other promises. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, you're not going to obtain everything. The promises are received and obtained through faith. So there are things we are hoping for and we're not seeing them yet. And maybe, just maybe, it's because we don't have a handle on how faith works, eh? Amen. And so we want to cooperate with Jesus. Jesus said we need to accept him in order to have eternal life. And so we have to accept what the Bible says about faith. You know, we can have our own ideas, what we think faith is, but faith is accepting the fact of what the Bible says faith is. And, and it's important and key for faith to work, what the Bible says about God. Many people have very different ideas about God, maybe because of their training, their experience with their fathers or whatever, but we can reprogram our mind. It has to line up with who the Bible says God is, and all we have to know to see how the Father is, is to look at what Jesus did, and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. The psalmist knows well his Father. He says, you're my rock, you're my salvation, you're my anchor, you're my hope, you're my salvation. Amen. We can have, get a correct understanding by accepting what the Bible says about our Father. We need to have faith to accept what the, Father, what the Bible says about you. If you've made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, you might feel guilty, you might feel shame, you might feel a lot of things, but the Word of God, faith, anchors to what the Bible says about you, that there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. The Bible says, I am the righteousness of God in Christ, and be holy as I am holy, and he is making us holy, but we are are justified by faith just as if we never sinned that's the truth and so we have to line our faith up with accepting what the word says about faith about a father about ourselves about how he created the world it's not a matter of opinion it's a matter of lining up with the word of God like I said earlier, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. And this word is living and active and powerful, and it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Jesus, God created the world with a spoken word. He had faith that he spoke things into existence, and they came into being. Amen. So we want to accept what the word says about everything. If the Bible says it, it's in the word and it's out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, his word will be established, then no matter what anybody else says, it's like I'm anchoring myself to that word. And circumstances have to line up with that word because I accept that word as truth. God is not a God that should lie. Amen? So in Jesus' name, no matter what your circumstances look like, I accept the word of God. What the Word of God says about me, what the Word says about my Father, what the Word says about my life, what the Word says I can have. If the Word of God says He will supply all my needs according to His riches and glory, then glory to God, I continue to confess that and do everything that He's putting in my hand to do. He would above all else that I prosper and be in health. Doesn't matter that somebody else, oh, I know sister so-and-so and she prayed. She was a woman, uh, you know, she went to church all her life and she he died. It's like, well, I'm not accepting anybody else's testimony. I accept one thing, the Word of God. 
Amen. That's the truth. If the word says that's who I am, that's what I have, then in Jesus' name, circumstances line up. Amen. Next faith is B for believing. And you might think, well, what's the difference? Well, the opposite of accepting is rejecting. And that's what Jesus was talking about here in John. He says, you don't accept me. You're rejecting me for whatever reason. So, so that's the opposite of accepting is rejecting. Now the opposite of believing is doubting. Doubt and unbelief will keep you from the promises of God. If you doubt it in your heart, the Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. For by believing in your heart, you are justified. Now, believing, how does believing work? Believing is an act of your will. It's not only accepting something, it is getting a little deeper. It's not a head thing. It is a heart thing. With the heart, a man believes. Now, Jesus said, believe and stop doubting. So, if we, he says to people, believe, like a command, and stop doubting, then we can stop doubting. <laughs> Amen? How many of you agree? If Jesus says stop doubting, then he gives it within our power to stop doubting. Doesn't ma mean that the enemy's not going to say, you know, you know, that's not going to work. You've tried that a few times and did it work? Oh, that just doesn't work for me, Pastor Nita. I've tried. It's like, nope, you just, you have to know that that word of God is good. Everything in your life has got to line up with the word. Amen. By believing it. I believe it. I believe with all of my heart because I set my heart to believe. Faith is a heart thing, not a head thing. Faith, the Bible says, is being confident, being convinced of. Let me just read those few of those uh, words. It's assurance. It's substance. It's reality. It's being confident. It's uh, reality, substantiating. It is to be sure. It assures us. It's a realization. It's a trust in God, the firm foundation under which everything in life makes sense. Being sure, being confident, being well-grounded assurance. It is the assurance of confirmation and title deed. Now, if you have a title deed, that's yours. How can you? It's the proof that something is. We have a title deed right here. It's called a testament. New will and testament. And so it's in this word. It is the assurance of things hoped for. And it's evidence of things not yet seen. Amen? There's that process uh, that, that sometimes get turning this whole thing around the way of our thinking. And doesn't that in itself just bring you hope? That if you know without a shadow of a doubt that once you have decided, <laughs> once you accepted the fact that everything that God says is true, and you believe it in your heart. So we're going to have to, we're going to learn how this works. We have to accept what God says. We have to believe it in our heart. And then the Bible says, now confess it with your mouth. If you believe in your heart that Jesus raised him from the dead, if you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. That's what the Bible says. So what if somebody, after they pray the prayer, they accept Jesus Christ, they receive Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, and they confess with their mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, and we don't ask them, so do you feel any different? Feelings are the caboose of the train. It'll, it'll happen. Eventually, you'll feel it, and it'll become a passion on the inside of you. And the more you exercise it, and the more you see things, things lining up and happening, and just because something doesn't happen all of the time, if you're having success rate of even 20% at first, but your faith is going to grow, that's why we give testimony. We overcome by the word of our testimony. If I've seen that someone else has had victory in a certain area, it builds 
builds faith in me that if I do what they do, if I follow their steps, that, that it, my faith is going to grow. See, faith grows by its very nature. The Bible gives us a measure of faith by which we can be saved. It is a gift of God. Amen. It is a measure of faith. But then it's in our ball court to make sure that we grow faith. Faith comes from hearing the word. So if people are neglecting the hearing of the word, the studying of the word, the Bible says, like good workmen that are not ashamed, they are rightly dividing the word of truth. They're listening to it and listening to it. For years, every day, while I was... In those days, we folded diapers and receiving blanks. I had lots of laundry with five kids. Every day, there was lots of laundry and lots of cooking and whatever. I'd listen to faith tapes. Over in those days, it was cassette. Turn it over, turn it over, turn it over, turn it over until I could fa feel faith was starting to settle in and faith was starting to grow. And then I began to believe it. And then because I received it. It was good news. It was, it offered those things that I hoped for. How am I going to get those things that I'm hoping for? A new life, a new way of thinking, a new attitude, a new marriage, a new family, a new kind of a, a atmosphere of worship. How are these things? They are received, if I can see God doing it in other people's lives, it gives me hope. Then I build faith by exercising faith, amen? By accepting, by believing, by confessing. Now we'll get into confessing. Faith is confessing. Let's go to Romans 10, 10, 9 and 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in me will never be put to shame. Now, I'm just, I'm just chewing on that one really good because you know what? When we're doing something and we don't have a victory right away, the Bible says, I'll never be ashamed. He will make sure to bring those things about so that we're not going to be failures. You're not going to fail when you do what God says to do. Many people are afraid because what if I fail? What if I don't get the end result? God is saying, if you do this my way, if you will accept my word as the truth, this is the way it is. There's no other way. If Jesus paid for all of my sicknesses, by his wounds I were healed. If he bore in his body my, his sick, my sicknesses in his body on the cross, then what am I doing bearing it? Now that in itself became, uh, I don't know what year it would have been, maybe, maybe in the early 80s that Grace and I came across this faith teaching and it gave us hope. As I remember the day with five children in our home, with something was going around, we'd have every kind of cough medicine. They used to have the little blue person on the front and the little red person. This is for this kind of cough, this is for that. It's like, oh, in Jesus' name, if we could just do away with sickness, I realized Jesus did away with sickness. It took a little while. Uh, I remember this. And it's a decision. It was like a decision. And we, had, we both look at each other. And sometimes I would say to Grace, circumstances. And she said, oh, well, what are you asking me to agree with? What's uh, chapter and verse for that one? Sometimes that would just like, oh, brother. Uh, but it was a decision. You're either on this path. You can't be double-minded in, in, in all your ways. The Bible says, make sure that man's not going to receive anything from God. He's un stable. You can't flip between faith and, 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 and unbelief. Amen. So it is an accepting a decision to make and then it's a believing and it's a taking into my heart and then it's a confessing with my mouth. Jesus Christ bore this in his body on the cross so I command this virus in Jesus name. You have no place in my body. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We started exercising this. We were so dirt poor. We had our budget worked out to being I think it was three dollars extra a month in case we had to buy somebody a present or something on a birthday. 
And so, you know, Gil and I just made a quality decision to do things God's way, started to tithe when that's the last thing we could afford to do. And, you know, it, the, it just started to turn this whole thing around, this whole poverty boat. It took, took a while for things to turn around. It, it doesn't always come instantaneously. And people give up on faith because they go, I prayed all day and nothing happened. Well, it's impossible that nothing happened. It did happen. But faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen, not yet entered the senses. So you're not feeling it quite yet, but believe me, it's working. The word can't not work. It just is going to work. Amen. And so it's a, an accepting, it's a believing, it's a confessing. That word is in your mouth, it's on your tongue. It's in your mouth, that power of the word, and the, by speaking it, we're, we're, it's going down, and it's becoming reality. That's how it happens. It becomes so real. It is the reality of things we do not yet see. It becomes so real that this building was so real to me, this building became so real to all of us as a board that we just kept walking through the hoops. It was a reality. It was a done deal in our spirit realm. Yes, we still had to walk through it, and you're still walking through life. You're still walking one day at a time. Amen. You're going to have trials. It's going to be a, a fight of faith. The Bible calls it a fight. It's a fight of faith. But I only know one kind of good fight. Fight the good fight of faith. What's a good fight? Is it a good fight when you get your brains knocked out? Amen? Nope. It's a fight. It's a good fight of faith when we win. And we keep on keeping on. And when the enemy knows that, he's got to let go. Faith grows and faith comes. So it's a decision. Is, are you going to keep on letting life and circumstances just have you? The Bible says the devil comes to rob and kill and destroy. He comes to rob you of your health. He comes to rob you of your joy, of your peace, of your marital happiness. That's what he's doing. You don't have a choice. You can either lay down and let and just be robbed to rob blind. Or you can say, this does it. This is how I fight my battles. I'm going to praise. I'm going to learn how faith works here. Amen. And so faith cannot work. Say with me. Faith cannot work without me speaking it. It's God's plan. Amen. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. If somebody says, now, nah, it's okay. I won't do that. It's like, sorry, but this is how faith works. You want to do things God's way or not, you're going to have to not only accept it, believe it, but the Bible says you've got to confess it with your mouth. Jesus, and then they say, Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord. I believe you died for my sins. That's how we get saved. We say it out of our mouths. Amen. And so faith can't work without, without a speaking. It can't work without our confession lining up. Now that can be a battle and a challenge in itself. Because like we said, you can't say one thing one day and say the other thing the other day. That is hard work. I caught myself this morning. It's like, nope, you can't do that. You can't be talking out of both sides of your mouth. Which way is it? Are you trusting God with the harvest? Does it seem so hard to win the lost? Well, that's not my job. God saying in his word, unless I draw them, they can't come. But I'm going to apply my faith and say the word that he would, that none perish, but all would come to repentance. That's where my faith is being exercised right now, is faith for the harvest. Faith to believe that there are families out there, as Paul prayed, I put to mind his word, and I'm doing things the way Apostle Paul did. He turned the world upside down. So I memorize scripture, and I confess that scripture every day in prayer. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom every family is named in heaven and in earth, that out of his glorious riches, his grace, he would strengthen people in their inner being by faith. Then Christ being rooted and grounded in them, they're going to have power to comprehend with all the saints the length and width, the height and the depth of his love, and be filled with all the fullness of God. There's 
salvation from A to Z. I confess that. I believe that. It doesn't, sometimes I don't see it. Sometimes I see another one hit and bite in the dust. And it's really hard not to talk out of both sides of my mouth. What are you believing for? What are you hoping for? What are you believing for? Amen. So you make your heart line up. Sorry, heart. You can't go that way anymore. I'm accepting the word of God as a bigger truth. Amen. Amen. And I'm staking my life on it. And I'm believing God's word. I'm going to believe God. I'm not going to believe my circumstances anymore. I'm not going to believe the devil. I'm not going to believe other people's lives. What happened to them? I'm believing God. And I'm believing his word. And it's going to come out of my mouth no matter what I feel. That word is going to come out of my mouth. It's a double-edged sword in my mouth. Amen. Amen. And so you read, circumstances... You got to change. You got to line up now in Jesus' name. Jesus said, he did this all the time. He said to you, he's saying to us, speak to that mountain. If you believe it in your heart and you talk to that mountain and you don't doubt in your heart, it'll move. It'll be cast into the sea. Any man. So it's like, okay, talk to your mountains. This is the way faith works. So that, you got to talk to it. What is it? Get an understanding of what this is and say, body, you line up in, in Jesus' mighty name. And I could tell you so many testimonies. You probably have testimonies too of times the Lord just supernaturally healed you. Oh, did he every time? Well, no, it was a fight. Did everything turn out for this building? No, there were times where it's like I laid on my bed and I cried and I said, I don't know what to do next. <gasps> yeah, it was a fight. Is it, are you having fun yet? It's not about having fun. It's a fight. Did I take a few black eyes? Oh, yeah. Does the devil oppose you in your walk of faith? Oh, yeah. There's times he said, I'm going to kill you before you leave. It's like, shut up, devil. You can't kill me. My life is hidden in Christ with God in Jesus' name. Well, then I'm coming after your husband. Well, in Jesus' name, look out, Gil, because the enemy said he's going to try. He's coming after us. He doesn't want us to do this. The devil opposes faith. He hates it. Amen. It's how Jesus overcame the devil when the devil tempted him. He spoke by faith. It is written. And the devil tried again. He could have said, see, it's not working. He's still here. And he tried another tactic in another way, in another way. And the Bible says, finally, the devil gave up for a more opportune time. I guess I'll get you. There's a new song out, Not Today, Devil. It's so good. Not today. We just have today. Not, oh, devil, not today. It won't be your day. Today's a day of victory in Jesus' name. We only have that grace and that strength. Uh, today I'm fighting. Today I defeat you. I trample upon snakes and scorpions and nothing by any means shall harm me in Jesus' name. You say it when you're feeling like you're, you're, you're flat. You're out for the count. Do you ever feel out for the count? <laughs> You ever see someone getting their beat up and it's like one, two, three. He's still not getting up. He's still not getting up. And the Bible says, the psalmist says, though he slay me, I'm still going to praise him. As long as I have breath in him, I will praise him. You're still Lord. You're still in charge. Circumstances, you got to line up with the word. Amen. Because God showed us how. Jesus showed us how. Jesus had to fight that walk, that walk of faith. He had to defeat the enemy. So what makes us think we're not going to have to have a little bit of a fight in this journey of fight? It's a fight of faith. Amen. Whatever's yours, you call back. Well, you got stolen. It's like, oh, no, you don't, devil. In Jesus' name, I call that back. There's all kinds of sheep that have been attacked and scattered because they didn't know any better. It's okay. Some have been gone for 10 years. I call them every single one of them back. I pray for them by name. Jesus says, I'm not going to lose one of the ones that Jesus gave me. So in Jesus' name, I'm not losing them. In the name of Jesus, they're going to come to their senses, and they're going to know where home is. The Bible says, even an ox knows his manger, but my people don't even know where they belong. Well, I just go in Jesus' name. Every single one that God's ordained before the foundations of the world to be part of Dorchester Christian Family Center, they hear that still small voice. This is the way walk ye in it. His voice do they hear. None other do they follow. 
And Lord, I just keep confessing the word, confessing the word, and I have an assurance. I have a confirmation. I have the title deed. Amen. That this will be the way God wants it to be. In Jesus' mighty name. And then last point today is demonstrating. So it's accepting, believing, confessing, and now demonstrating. So we'll find those, that scripture um, again in Hebrews in a few verses. So we have verse 5. We have these wonderful, we are surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses and examples in this chapter. And you can study it and keep confessing that. Uh, we, our first example we're looking at is in verse 4. Abel. Oh my goodness, I got a movie in my head because I meditated on this. Cain and Abel, two brothers. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Canaan did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he's dead. How does he still speak? By his example. Give what God says to give. What is God's? Don't rob God. Amen. And so faith, Abel did what God said. God said bring a blood sacrifice. Abel brought a blood sacrifice. Now in some of the translations it said it's not so much what he brought. Uh, but uh, how did that word it? It's not in the NIV. Anyways, it's, it is what he brought. Because when God says a specific, we obey specifically. Now Cain, he brought the fruit of his ground, and this is the movie in my head. So Cain was a farmer. He planted vegetables and fruit, and that's the kind of farmer he was. His brother also was a farmer, but he had flocks, and he had sheep. And God said to bring a lamb. Remember we talked about the blood sacrifice, the story of the lamb before Christmas, and the first Christmas message was a story of a lamb and it's a blood sacrifice so Abel he brought the Lord the produce of his of the products of his land he would have to humble himself to go to his brother and said brother I need I need a spotless lamb I need to trade you here and there would have been a humbling to be able to say you've got something I need I need God said bring a blood sacrifice so I need to trade you my produce for this but as brothers can sometimes be competitive he didn't want to do that I'll bring what I want to bring and I'm not going to humble myself before my brother and so he brought what he wanted and it was definitely his attitude but it's also what he brought Amen. And so when God says something, people will split hairs about what to give God. And God couldn't make it more plain than the nose on your face of what to bring. Amen. He said what to bring. So he's, he's an example. He did it by faith and God commended him. And he was pleased with his offering because his heart attitude was right. And he did what God said. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll just obey me. It won't be a lot of hard work. It just, if you love me, you'll want to do things my way. Amen? So that was an awesome example by faith. And then the next verse in verse 5. And Enoch, I've often thought I would just love to, I wonder if anybody else was ever taken. Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Again, he pleased God. This is my dream, ultimately. If I disappear someday, it's because I think that would be a wonderful way to go. You can't find me around the pond. Where is she? She's not at White Oaks. Nope, she's not uh, visiting her friend for tea. Nope, she's not at the church. We can't find her anywhere. God must have taken her before she got really old. So that would have been, that's, I go, and oh, wouldn't that be awesome? Just put your faith out there to be taken. Right, just let me bear lots of fruit, Lord, and then just take me away like that. That would be an awesome way to go. But anyways, aside from joking, 
He pleased God because anyone, and it says, without faith it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So he's not only pleased with our offering and commends us for faith, but it's like, do you believe God wants to reward you? God wants to reward you. He's just like, how can I bless these people? He is such a blesser. And so faith, when you're exercising faith, even when we look cute, you know, sometimes kids, when they do things, uh, they're trying real hard to be big. They're just absolutely adorable. When they're trying to march around in your high heel shoes or whatever, and they're trying to be big, uh, whatever it is that they're trying to do, sit behind the wheel. I remember Samuel said he, he was, that was okay. Opal was gone. He could give everybody a ride on Opa's Harley. He was going to give everybody a ride. He could just see, a, he could see in his mind, uh, he was doing this. By faith, he could see himself doing it. God's saying, I love it when my kids just take faith to the next degree. And what keeps us from doing that? That brings a smile to God's face. What keeps us from stretching the limits? What do you hope for? It's like, okay, God, give me the key. Give me the key. How, how do, what, do, what, is, what is the way, you've got a way for me to walk through this maze of faith to obtain those precious promises of God. And so it's pleasing to God when we walk by faith. Then in verse 7, by faith, Noah, when warned of things not seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with the faith. Again, keeping with the faith. One foot in front of the other. Just do what God said. And when you're doing everything that you know to do, just keep on doing it. Keep on walking it. Keep on saying it. Knowing without a shadow of a doubt, having the guarantee in your hand, having that title deed in your hand, it's mine by faith in Jesus' name. You know, a lot of faith people have been criticized by, by name it and claim it and everything else. It's like, just it's the word's way. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. He wants us to obtain all the promises by faith. That's how they come. It pleases God. It doesn't displease him when you believe for more. When you're believing more for more for the right attitude, it's God's pleasure to reward those who diligently seek him. If you say, Lord, make my life an example in every area. Father, make my life an example that others will know what it looks like to serve God, to believe God, to confess his word. Show, sh let me be that example. Then we're just wanting to be like these faith heroes. And that pleases God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And then the last example in verse 8, these all could be sermons within themselves. It's Abraham. Abraham's faith example. By faith, Abraham, when he's called to go to a place that he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and went, even though he didn't even know where he was going. And by faith, he made his home in a promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as his Isaac and Jacob, who were his heirs with them of the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city with foundations whose architect and builder was God. And so there's many, many steps of faith that Abraham took, as we know. And so each, each step of the way, I just going, is all of it a Sunday school picnic? No, it's hard work. He had to leave everything that was familiar, maybe a a society that was a little bit more established and go and live in a tent by faith. Well, here I am, God. And you can't make God say the next step until he's ready to take you to the next step. But it's a wonderful way to a walk because eventually it's what you inherit that says to the whole world, look at this. This is the architect and builder is God of this thing. Amen. Something noteworthy, something praiseworthy, something significant, something to say, this is proof. That's one of the words. That's what faith is. It's the evidence of things hoped for. 
It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the proof of things not yet seen, but they will be seen. And so when you say, you know, you're believing, what are you hoping for? What are you believing for? What are you accepting, believing, confessing, demonstrating? Sometimes even by faith, I have to do something that seems a little bit weird. And I go, sorry, God, but I'm demonstrating by faith. You said if I knock, the door will be opened. And I just knock. I knock on whatever's closest to me. I'll knock on something. I'll knock and I'll say, I'm knocking. I'm asking. I'm seeking. I'm accepting, I'm believing, I'm confessing, I'm demonstrating right now, Lord, that I believe that as I knock on this door, this door will be opened. In Jesus' name, set before me an open door, effective doors. Paul prays, I pray the Lord will open effective doors that I may boldly declare the full counsel of God. And then we just step on through the doors. What we will inherit, we just believe, putting, investing time into people, not quite sure exactly what it's going to look like, but it's going to look good. Amen? Let's just stand to our feet. I believe this is the year... How many were going to come in faith and believe with me? I believe with all my heart that this is the year that all these things that you are hoping for and believing for that have your name on it, that it's going to be the year to come to pass. This is the year that Heather gets healed. This is the year that people have been believing ba for babies that they get their babies. This is the year that anybody who needs deliverance from anything they could be delivered from is delivered. This is the year that people who have been believing for a spouse and they get their, that they, that's coming to pass in Jesus' name. Everything that God had promised you I got good news for you. It's yes. Every one of you that are believing for the salvation, household salvation, this is it. This is it. Amen. This is the year. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Amen.
stands like a giant in front of us. But when David arrived at that battlefield, he said, who is this Philistine that questions the Lord? The Lord's army. It took him a big step of faith to step up with just a slingshot saying, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you, Mr. Giant. But he steps out. And what the devil meant to destroy his place is now known as one of the greatest stories of faith. Because he stepped out and said, No giant, not today. So I just want to join, ask you to join us to sing, whether it's over unbelief, whether it's over fear, whether it's over sickness, whatever, whatever it is this year that might be holding you back from the fullness of what God has for you. Yeah. 